Hi guys and welcome to another episode of the Assassin's Creed story. Today we'll be covering the first Assassin's Creed game that came out in 2007. But first, if you haven't watched my other two videos, I suggest you go and check them out either after or before you watch this video as it has a lot of backstory. Alright, let's get into it. The very first Assassin's Creed game was set in the region of Levant during the Crusades of the 12th century. Levant was a region east of the Mediterranean Sea consisting of places like Cyprus, Egypt, Iraq, Iran, Jordan, Lebanon, Palestine, Syria and Turkey. The story follows that of an assassin who is based in Levant and is active during the Third Crusade, called Altair. This story starts with Altair and two other assassin brothers attempting to retrieve a piece of Eden, but are stopped by a Grand Master Robert de Sable of the Templar Order, the sworn enemies of the assassins. In an attempt to kill the Grand Master, Altair ends up breaking all three of the assassins' tenants. Stay your blade from the flesh of an innocent, hide in plain sight, and never compromise the Brotherhood. He fails to kill the Grand Master, he also fails to get the artifact, and in the commotion one of his brothers is killed and the other brother's arm is crippled, which later on will be amputated. Altair arrives back at the stronghold empty-handed with nothing but apologies. One of the brothers, who survived the Grand Master's attack, comes back with the artifact and dismisses Altair due to his arrogance. During the mission debrief, the stronghold is assaulted by the Templars and Altair and his brothers have to fend off their attack. And after dealing with this, Al-Mulim, the leader of the order, demotes Altair to a novice and strips him of all his gear. Altair is then given nine contracts he must complete across the Holy Land, with the aim to bring peace between the Crusade and the Sacran forces. Each target is actually based on an actual historical figure from the Third Crusade. On his way to each one of the cities, Altair is to report to the Assassin's Brewer there to gain basic information on his targets. He must gather additional information on his own though, through the eavesdropping, interrogation and informants. Once he's gathered enough information, he can complete the contract and assassinate the target. Upon completion of each of the contracts, he can head back to the stronghold in Massif for a debrief with his superior, and with each target he kills, he is given better equipment. Upon completion of each of the targets, he can head back to the stronghold in Massif for a debrief with his superior. Each of the targets he kills will give him better equipment. As Altair makes his way through his list of targets, he learns more about how each target is connected to the Grand Master Robert and the Templar Order, and how they plan to place the Holy Land under their control. Altair uncovers that Robert's last plan is to unite the Christians with the Muslim forces against his enemy, the Assassins. After tracking down Robert, Altair ends up killing him in front of King Richard, failing to convince the king to end the war. In Grand Master's last dying moments, Altair finds out that Al-Mulim is actually a member of the Templar Order and was using the Assassins to kill other members of the Templar Order who know about the artifact's power so that he could keep it for himself. Altair returns to the stronghold to confront Al-Mulim, who reveals the truth about himself and about the artifact. He explains that the artifact is used to create illusions such as the Plague of Egypt, parting of the Red Sea, and also the presence of the gods in the Trojan War. Al-Mulim explains that he intends to use the artifact to brainwash mankind and end all of conflict. He proceeds to use the artifact to cast an illusion to escape, however Altair manages to see through the illusion and kills Al-Mulim. After killing Al-Mulim, Altair retrieves the artifact and it activates in his hand, revealing a globe with the other pieces of Eden marked on it. This globe at the end of the game is how the first Assassin's Creed is connected to the other ones carrying forward. I will explain this connection as well as the connection to the previous titles Assassin's Creed Origin and Odyssey. As we've come to learn over the releases of new games in the series, Bayek, from Assassin's Creed Origin and the founder of the Hidden Ones, sent agents to Petra and Judea in the hopes of creating branches across Levant. But it wasn't until a century later, where Hassan the Younger was leading the Brotherhood, that it expanded from northern Persia into Levant, when Al-Mulim and his forces were set the task of establishing strongholds in the anu Mountains. And with these strongholds, the Levantic Brotherhood was created. However, in 1090, the first recorded existence of the Assassins came to light when Hassan founded the Assassins' own sovereign state, and with this act, the order became part of public knowledge. Not long after this establishment, the Templars did the same thing, change their name from the Order of Ancients to the Knights Templar and masquerading as a military order defending the Christian pilgrims. 
and that's how both orders became known as what they are today. After the death of al Mulim, al Tayyir was made leader of the Levant branch, and under his leadership, he reformed the order, creating new techniques. And with the knowledge gained from the Apple of Eden, the Levanti Brotherhood set out to expand and spread its teachings across the globe. And with this act, the Brotherhood became the forebearers of many other branches. Under al Tayyir's reign, he actually did a lot of good for the Brotherhood. He was the one who recreated the assassin's blade so that you didn't need to sacrifice your ring finger. He also created several new assassination techniques, which we've all come to know and love, such as the air assassination, assassination from hiding spots, and assassination from ledges. He also allowed the use of poison, which resulted in the invention of the poison blade. He also allowed assassins of high ranking to wield two hidden blades instead of one. There were many rules and restrictions that he changed, such as being able to use poison, but also allowing assassins with children to be able to show their children affection. Altair was also able to strengthen the Brotherhood across the Holy Land, eventually spreading it into other countries such as Cyprus. However, his expansion was stopped when he hit Constantinople due to the Fourth Crusade waging on there. His expansion was also stopped by Genghis Khan, who had been conquering new areas to expand his Mongolian Empire. In the year 1217, Altair and his wife Maria, also his son Darium, left for Mongolia, leaving the order in the leadership of Malik, his trusted advisor. And in his absence, the order started to deteriorate. Two years later, Altair and his family returned successful in their objective to kill the Mongolian leader with the aid of the assassins in Mongolia. He returns to find out that his son that he left behind, Sef, has been murdered and that the order is being run by a tyrant called Abbas. And after facing off with Abbas, Altair eventually ends up giving him the apple. Abbas's right-hand man, Siwam, went to retrieve the apple from Altair and upon touching it, felt Altair's rage flow through his body. A golden ray erupts from his mouth, and Siwami begins to mutilate himself. Maria, trying to stop Altair from using the apple, ends up being killed in the process. And left with no other option, Altair decides to flee Masaf Castle. After living in exile for 20 years, Altair returns to Masyaf to face Abbas one last time. And after gaining the supports of assassins and villagers alike, who are against Abbas's tyranny, he makes his way up to the stronghold. Altair and his supporters don't actually use violence in this attack, but instead capture the attacking assassins. And Altair will eventually face Abbas one on one. During this encounter, Altair uses a new invention he created during his time as an exile, the hidden gun. He uses it against Abbas and killing him, thus freeing the order from his tyranny rule. Altair is once again accepted back into the order and accepted as a leader, and he revives the Brotherhood back to its former state, while also beginning the construction of the library beneath the castle. However, not that long after Altair is in charge, he decides that the assassins should disband from the stronghold, seeing it as a sign of arrogance and a beacon for their enemies. He instead wants the assassins' order to be global, but also work from the shadows. So he begins to send assassins from the stronghold to various locations away from the castle. With the stronghold almost abandoned, Altair's son Darium returns home from his journey across Europe. On his journey, he met two tradesmen from Italy and invited them to stay with them at Masyaf. They were known as the Polo Brothers. Knowing that the Polo Brothers journeyed far and wide across Europe and Asia, Altair began training them in the assassin ways, hoping that later on down the line they'd be able to form more assassin guilds. During the training, one of the brothers would often jot down the life stories of Altair, which later became titled The Secret Crusade. Whilst the Polo brothers were training, Masyaf was attacked by the Mongolians, who had destroyed most of the assassin fortresses across the Levant. After about a month of training, the Polo brothers and Altair split ways, with the Polo brothers taking several books from Altair, including his codex, to answer many of their remaining questions. Altair also gave them the five keys needed to open his library underneath the stronghold, and to stop them from falling into the hands of the Templars. After helping the brothers escape, Altair and Darium returned to their stronghold, and after taking what remained in the library, Darium prepared to leave for Alexandria. After saying goodbye to his father, Darium left, and Altair locked himself in his library with the Apple of Eden, where he remained until his passing. And that sums up the life of Altair and how he changed and reformed the Assassin's Creed Order into what it is today. And that concludes our video. As always, don't forget to like or dislike this video. And if you want to hear more from me or the guys at Respawning, don't forget to hit subscribe. 
Also hit the bell icon so you can be notified when we update new content. I've been Kim aka Toki Stark and you've been amazing. See you in the next one.